Okay, this is the second part of my lecture about Sato in the Bakumatsu uh, and also from 1870 to 1883. So really it's the second period of time there. Um, but we start here with uh, Sato on leave in Paris in 1869. Uh, this is uh, a, f uh, a photograph which is found on Wikipedia actually. Um, okay, so let's move on and ask about Sato. How about Sato in 1870 to 1883? It was not as exciting or as turbulent as the Bakumatsu period, of course, but it was a chance to learn more about Japan and travel in the interior. Uh, so Hugh Kotatsi, in his forward to my transcription of Sato's diaries for 1870 to 83, says, that these years were an interlude during which he sometimes must have felt that he was marking time and making no progress in life. However, it was very productive in terms of Sato's study of Japan. He got to know the country much better. Uh, the Asiatic Society of Japan was founded in Yokohama in 1872, and it was a great platform for Sato and others to read scholarly papers. Uh, chronology. So 1869, Sato leaves Japan on February 24th for home leave. In 1870, he returns to Japan by the end of November. In 1871, he travels in Japan with the Austrian diplomat Baron Hübner, who is traveling around the world at the time. 1872, uh, Sato travels with the Chargé d'Affaires, Francis Otwell Adams, and he inspects lighthouses in the west of Japan with Okuma Shigenobu. Um, in 1873, he travels to Ogawa and Oyama. In 1874, he visits Nikko uh, from September to October. In 1875, he leaves Japan for home leave in February. Uh, in 1876, he studies law at Marburg University in Germany from May to August actually Roman law. Um, in 1877, he returns to Japan in January and is in time to see the uh, Satsuma rebellion begin with uh, Saigo Takamori leading his troops uh, out of Kagoshima. Um, in 1878, he visits Hachijo with uh, Frederick Victor Dickens and Toyama with Albert George Sidney Hawes, and, and he also visits Korea for the only time in his life, sent there by Parks to investigate the country. Um, 1879, he travels in Yamato and Chiba areas. Uh, in 1880, his first son Eitaro is born, and again, he does more travels in Japan. Uh, in 1881, uh, the Handbook for Travelers in Central and Northern Japan is published, uh, and in 1882, the Treaty Revision Conference begins uh, to revise the 1858 treaties, the unequal treaty uh, between Britain and Japan. Um, he travels to various places, and John Harrington Gubbins relieves him in December. So he actually leaves Japan very early in January 1883, going via Nagasaki. And, uh, oops, slipped again. So here we've got uh, Charles Vergman, a couple of delightful sketches by Vergman of the Japan Punch. Sato returns to Japan in 1870, uh, return of the center of our policy in Japan. And uh, I see Willis there in the left in Kagoshima. Uh, and then Adams, Hubner, and Sato traveling in the interior of Japan in 1871. And the caption, what does that say? The Japanese government enjoys a week of holy calm. <laughs> so not pestered by these people, uh, the diplomats. Um, okay. Uh, and on we go. Here is some calligraphy by Sato in 18, written in 1873. It's a rare example. 
and it's uh, the Chinese poem Spring Garden by Wang Bo in the British Library in London. Uh, he did have remarkable ability with his with calligraphy. He was taught calligraphy specifically, but uh, still that is remarkable. Um, and his publications, this is actually quite a long section. There are three slides here of publications. So we've got the, the Ainos of Yezo, which is actually the Ainu of Hokkaido. Extract from the history of Taiko Sama, which is a translation, the history of the Hojo family, translation, history of the Minamoto family, translation. Notes on Luchu, which is Okinawa, uh, Ryukyu, in fact, in the transactions of the Asiatic Society of Japan, 1873, Kinsei Shiryaku, which is a history translation, another trans history translation, the Kwaiwa Hen, which was a textbook which Sato made for, to help um, student interpreters at the legation to learn Japanese conversation, a geography of Japan, uh, the Japanese chronological tables, the Shinto temples of Ise, note the spelling of Shinto there, the old style of spelling, Romanization, revival of pure Shinto, uh, guidebook to Nikko in the Japan Mail, English-Japanese dictionary, and ob observations on the downfall of the Christian mission in Japan in the transactions. A lot of these publications are from the transactions of the Asiatic Society of Japan. And then we've got more, a couple of in bold because I, I introduced them later in this talk. Introduction of tobacco into Japan, uh, Korean potters in Satsuma, the use of the fire drill in Japan, notes of a visit to Hachijo, that's Hachijo Island with Frederick Victor Dickens, the climate of Japan translated from the German, the mythology and religious worship of the ancient Japanese in the Westminster Review, Ancient Japanese rituals, vicissitudes of the church at Yamaguchi, 1550 to 1586, on transliteration of the Japanese syllabary, ancient Japanese rituals too, uh, reply to Dr. Aitkins on Chi and Su, and then ancient sepulchral mounds in Kozuke. Um, remarkable variety of subjects, but of course, the field was entirely open to him to do what he wanted, really. Study what he wanted. Um, Ancient Japanese Rituals 3, a handbook for travelers in central and northern Japan. This was published with Lieutenant Albert George Sidney Hawes of the Marines, I think it was, um, retired. Notes on a Chinese Japanese vocabulary of the 15th century on the early history of printing in Japan, further notes on movable types. This is also printing in Korea and early Japanese printed books and a Sanskrit manuscript in the chrysanthemum of 1882. So a remarkable uh, output, it has to be said. In the 1860s, uh, Sato did not have time for a deep study of Japan, Japanology. Well, this is my interpretation. He only wrote three papers in the 1860s. Various styles of Japanese writing, translation of the diary of a member of the Japanese embassy to Europe in 1862 to 63, and British policy, which I've talked about in the first part of this lecture. Um, not really a paper as such newspaper article. Uh, he was still learning the language and too busy interpreting to research Japanese subjects deeply. So that chance came in the 1870s, as we've seen by uh, looking at his output in the 1870s. Um, so let's take a look at some of his papers. This is a one from 1865, showing the various styles of Japanese writing. There are four examples given. A uh, square character from Watoku Yore, uh, square Chinese character from Tokushi Yoron, 
Gyosho, which is cursive script number three, and Hiragana, Hirakana from Yehon Taikoki. And number four is the specimen of a well-educated woman's letter in Hiragana or Hirakana as it is here. Um, and this is uh, more detail of those examples. The first is the romanization of the text and then translation. Uh, this is for number three and number four. Um, and, uh, oops, sorry, I've gone too far. Uh, also some notes. on three and four. Okay, here's another paper, uh, Introduction of Tobacco into Japan in 1877, which is interesting for its illustrations as much as anything. Um, so he read it to the society, Asiatic Society on the 10th of November, 1877. Um, and here's some more Japanese pipes called Kiseru. And here's a paper on ancient sepulchral mounds in Kozuke, what we would call Kofun, I think, in modern Japanese, or tumuli, maybe, um, in English. So ancient sepulchral mounds in Kozuke by Anisato read on April 13th, 1880, to the Society of Asiatic Society of Japan. And you've got this drawing here as well. Um, it's a subject of great fascination also in the modern day. Um, for example, uh, uh, Simon, Professor Simon Kainer of uh, uh, the Sainsbury Institute in Norwich is very interested in this sort of thing. And here are the sort of things that you find in the burial mounds. And here are some diary entries, actually starting in 1863. Um, last month, the demands were at last made on Satsuma after a great deal of hesitation on the part of the Admiral who wanted to send no more than two ships, it was decided that the squadron should consist of the Euryalus, Pearl, Perseus, Argus, Coquette, Racehorse and Gumboat Havoc. The Euryalus was the flagship, I think. All the legation from Colonel Neil down to myself accompanied the fleet upon the plea that our services might be wanted as interpreters, but in reality, in order to make you look see. We started on the 6th of August. Willis and I in the Argus uh, 6, a paddle steamer, uh, 6 is I think the number of guns, uh, a paddle steamer commanded by L.F. Moore, who put us up in his large and comfortable cabin. And there's the bombardment of Kagoshima, as depicted possibly in the Illustrated London News. I'm not quite sure about that. Uh, in October 1865, Sato visited Hokkaido and encountered Ainus for the first time, and he sketched them in his diary. And these are indeed Sato's sketches uh, of two Ainu men, I think. What does it say? But I, it says, Yaito aged 68, and then Nomur, Nomiranke aged 55, um, pencil sketches. Ah, there we are, comment on the sketches in his diary. The two preceding sketches, though not pretending to be anything artistic, being sketched with a Mordo's pencil on the leaf of a notebook, represent male Ainos pretty correctly. They were always pleased with notice taken of them by foreigners and made the salute by raising both hands from the knee and carrying them up to the head, a kind of abbreviation of a sign of humiliation, namely putting dust on the head in the presence of a superior. Is there any such abbreviated ceremony practiced still anywhere? 
good question, uh, one which I can't personally answer. Here's the diary for 1867, an extract. January the 1st, started from Nagasaki in the Argus, Commander HL Round, breeze blowing rough weather. January 2nd, at half past one, anchored in front of Kagoshima, some officers pulled off from the shore, bringing a flag with them for us to hoist while firing a salute in answer to theirs on our dropping anchor. Matsuoka Judayu was sent on board to explain that Shuri no Daibu and Osumi no Kami were in retirement on account of the death of the latter's mother a short time previously. As neither of them could show themselves, the duty of receiving the Admiral's letter would be performed by the Prince's second brother, supported by two Karos retainers. Um, went on shore and stopped at the Shuzeikan at Iso. Uh, J. Sutcliffe, H. Harrison and N. Shillingford are the names of the three foreigners stopping here, the two former being here on spec to pick up what they can, and the latter having a year's engagement. Okay, 1868, January 7th. All is up with the tycoon now, that's the shogun. Moriyama came in the morning to communicate the news of his withdrawal from Kyoto. Pretended to suppose at first that he had come down to see the French minister, not at all. He has come down here deprived of the shogunate. He had made up his mind to do this four or five days ago, but was persuaded to countermand the orders given for his departure, whereat the Gaikoku Bugyo, the magistrates down here, had much rejoiced. The magistrates dealing with foreign uh, foreigners, in fact, Gaikoku Bugyo. Now the orders were repeated and would be carried out. Sauntered out to look at the preparations made for his coming, small bodies of drilled troops marching about drumming, field pieces placed so as to sweep the streets, men in all sorts of costumes suffering from the cold and with their heads muffled up did not present a very martial appearance. And actually here is the original of what I've just read. You can see around here, January 7th, all is up with the tycoon now, okay? So, yeah. Did not present a very martial appearance, that's up to here then. That's Sato's handwriting. And a, the diary for 1869, audience with the emperor. On January the 5th, Tuesday, we, today we had our audience of the Mikado, the emperor. On this occasion, Parks asked a lot of, whole lot of naval and military men besides Stanhope and Colonel Norman, and the number of persons to be presented was increased from 12 to double that. As usual, the chief had mismanaged it and did not even know who was going. The naval squadron supplied 100 marines to form a guard. The costumes were various, especially of the legation and consular people. Fearfully cold with snow, which changed into sleet and then into rain by the time we got to the castle. The audience took place in the palace of the Nishinomaru, just inside the Sakurada gate. Uh, this is it, uh, Edo. We were admitted past the usual geba over one of the bridges, right up to the edges, abutments of the second bridge. Here we were met by Machida Mimbu and conducted inside into the courtyard from which we ascended at once into the antechamber. The Prince of Awa, Higashi Kuze, Saigo, Nakayama Dainagon and Okubo Ichizo came in and paid the usual compliments. Then we were ushered into a very dark room where the Mikado sat under a canopy rather larger than that used at Osaka. The prime minister stood below on the right and read the Mikado's speech. Sir Harry replied very neatly. We then left and returned at a canter, that'd be on, horse, on horseback therefore, to the old legation in Takanawa, now a branch of the foreign office where we had great feasting. And uh, okay, so here's something from of travel in Japan. January the 18th, uh, left Fuchu at 8.10. It was fearfully cold and I had to get Reeve to tie one of my boots. We had Jin Riksha, that's rickshaws, but I did not use mine. 
Fuji, as Mount Fuji, first appeared to us just after we got out of the town, road lined with trees to a slight hill on this side of the Tamagawa called Hinozaka. Streams which gave forth st steam shortly after leaving Fuchu, somewhat lukewarm. Beautiful view of Fuji with a mountain which we fancy we discovered to be Aoneyama on the left. Hino is a respectable sized place. Ascended onto a slightly elevated plateau extending to the Owadagawa, where we had to cross to, which we had to cross to enter Hachoji. Multiple mulberry trees everywhere. Reached it at 11.5. It was full of pack horses from one end to the other. Left in Jinriksha, that's rickshaws, at 11.35 and got to Komagino at 12.35. In where we breakfasted Hanaya Hyokichi, clean and nice. Left at 2 p.m. walking and got it got at once into the hills. Road not very steep. Got to top of pass at 3.30. Wild boar and monkeys. Fine view over Edo Plain the whole way up. Okay, so this is this part, what I've just read. Left foot you at eight and so on. Uh, and uh, here is desire, uh, diary entry from Chuzenji, Lake Chuzenji. This lake is above Nikko. Uh, and I talk about Nikko in a separate video. Anyway, sep September 29th started for 8.15 for Chuzenji, road from Magaishi over hill washed away and path along bed, Kawara, of the torrent perpetually crossed and recrossed by small temporary bridges. This is, however, the more advantageous route, the Kazana high up in a rocky precipice, which crowns the left bank. Fine view from the Naka no Chaya after passing Hanya no Taki, stone said to be magnetic, highest point 4,000 feet, Nikko being 1,600. Path on left through wood to the view of Kegon no Taki waterfall. Uh, the stream from the lake descends 100 feet or so, and little of it is visible above the fall. Grand semicircle of rock surmounted by hills covered to their very summits by deciduous trees, lovely autumn tints. Descent rather steep to brink of precipice, three quarter facing cassade, cascade, sorry. No balustrade to prevent falling into abyss. Bottom of the opposite rock invisible. Far, far below on the left, the stream can be seen flowing silently at what can be no great distance from the foot of the cascade. The estimate of 750 feet is perhaps no exaggeration. By another path through the wood to Chuzenji, sat down, and lunched at a large smoky chaya, that's a tea house, near the entrance of the village. All the pilgrims' huts closed, three tea houses open in all. About two started for Yumoto, that's 2 p.m., yeah. The Chuzenji Lakes seems much finer than in March 1872. Hills covered to their tops with deciduous trees all round it. Nantaizan, that's Mount Nantai, rising into the sky close from the northern shore also completely covered with trees, excepting here and there a long streak of bare black rocks down which the water must rush headlong in rainy weather. So again, here's the part of the diary which I've just read. And this is Mount Lake Chuzenji and Mount Nantai. Beautiful lake. Uh, then the Satsuma Rebellion, so-called Seinan Senso in Japanese. On February the 11th, 1877, Saigo Takamori came to see Willis, who had proposed to call on him on business, and I had also desired to pay him a visit. He was accompanied by a guard of some 20 men who kept jealous watch over his movements. Four or five insisted on following him into the house in spite of his orders to the contrary, and even upstairs into Willis's private sitting room. One sat at the bottom of the stairs, two occupied the first landing, and another posted himself outside the door. The conversation was of no importance. Willis wished to impress on him the necessity of giving a definite position to Mitamura, a Kishu man, who was, 
who is going as chief of the medical staff. Saigo and I also exchanged a few sentences. He told us that the number of rank and file would be over 10,000. Date of departure not fixed. Okay, here are Saigo Takamori on the left and Dr. William Willis on the right. Um, Willis was the medical doctor at the legation in the 1860s, and later, later uh, served in Kagoshima, uh, which is where he was at this time. All right, so the Treaty Revision Conference of 1882, January 25th, the first serious meeting of the preliminary conference on treaty revision met today at the Foreign Office. In the evening, I dined at the German legation and after dinner, we drafted the protocol in French and English. Roquette and Eisendecher, the former, with a few hints from Hoffer, and while Roquette dictated the French to Eisendecher, I made an English version. On the next day, 26th, Sir Harry Parks arrived with his two daughters and Dr. Hebern and his wife. February the 1st, second meeting of the conference, we tried in vain to get the English recognized as the sole language of the conference, but the other party was too numerous and it was finally agreed that English, French and Japanese should all be recognized and each delegate signed the version which he chose to be bound by. The other members of the Secretariat are Alexander von Siebold, uh, Heinrich von Siebold, Crean of the German legation, Per Evra and Evra, I suppose, and Lavoisier, French, and three Japanese, Yoshida Masaharu, Kurino Shinichiro, and Komyoji Saburo. So here's a, uh, an illustration of the conference. And this is what I was actually, I just published at the time when I, uh, when I gave this lecture in the first place, um, in the diaries of Sato for Uruguay and Morocco. Um, and there's the final page. Thank you for listening. And the, the web page there is uh, up to date. It still exists. And uh...